Hi everyone, welcome back to Adventure 365, the channel that's going places. Well, it was a momentous day yesterday. Beryl got an MOT. She actually runs and drives, guys. She's ready to go out, except for one thing. When I was loading her up yesterday, we're sort of struggling to find places to put stuff. We've got lots of storage for small things, clothing, food, water, all that we've got storage for. What I'm actually struggling for is somewhere to put my tools. Um, well, no, I've actually put the tools behind the driver's seat, but spare parts, uh, what else, like the barbecue, the toilet, things that live in wolf boxes in the back of Heimdall. I'm suffering, um, um, I'm struggling to find places to put it. So what I think I'm going to do is build uh, a roof rack that goes across the front like a bridge across here. Now I've just been and bought a brand new brown church roof rack, well almost brand new. Uh, I'm going to cut it up and use that, see if I can make something out of it. If you don't know what I mean, I'll put a picture in here of what I'm thinking of building, well pretty much what I am building. So here's the roof rack guys, and like I said, it looks almost brand new, it's a shame to cut it up, but this is going to make my job a lot easier than building it all from scratch. Um, so I'm going to make several cuts along there, so this is just the width of a wolf box. Then I'm going to cut the back section off two inches, so it's going to be just two inches bigger than the, well, two inches, 50 mil bigger than a wolf box so we've got a little bit more space so things drop in easy uh, there won't be a lot of movement I might even narrow that down when I start welding it up I might take it down just like 25 mil bigger just so things slot in plus it gives us somewhere we can actually put max tracks or anything like that as well so we'll get two wolf boxes in and a bit of space and that will cure all our storage problems in barrel so it's a shame I've got to cut up a Really nice roof rack, but there you go. We'll make something good out of it. So first job, cut all the way along. So that's it now, there's no going back. Well, I guess I could weld it back together, but uh, yeah. Actually, that's not too heavy either. Once I cut these legs off, because I'm not going to need them, that's all right. Well, I'll cut the back off and uh, we'll get this cleaned up and welded back together, but smaller. And it's cut me. Ow. Oh, that was a lot of grinding, a lot of grinding and a lot of cutting because I had to clean the galve off where it's going to be welded. Now I've changed this slightly. Well, I was looking at the picture of the, the picture that I put in to show you what it's going to look like. I realised that they'd actually made it so that the boxes fitted lengthways, not widthways. 
So I've, had to, I've made this a bit longer, but it's worked out really well because it's evened up the spacing. The spacing's pretty much perfect now. So it will now take three boxes. Three boxes like that and a bit of space at the end. So, you know, or I can put three in the middle, you know, whatever. But we get one extra box in. Um, I think my original, what's it were, my original measurement was going to be like 18 and I think it's now 20. So I think these are 19 and a half inches. I've got a tape hang on. 19 and three quarters, just over, just over 500 mil. And that works out at, uh, that's 515 mil. So yeah, that's going to work really well for me. So there we have it guys, I'm going to weld this together now. So tack it all together and get it all stitched up. And once I've done that, I'll be back. It's, uh, it's going to be a, a long boring process otherwise of me just welding this. So I'll show you this when it's all welded up. There you have it, one basket. I'm calling it a basket or a bridge. I don't know what to call it. Little roof rack. But, uh, yeah, it's gone together all right, considering it was galvied. A bit of a pain welding galvy. I've got some contamination in some of the welds. Mainly on these two. I think there's a bit of galvy left inside the tube. The rest of them have welded okay. But they've actually welded on the bottom side much better, so I'm not too worried. They're not taking a, a massive amount of load. But yeah, there you go. So... Now, I've got to make a, brand, a, a plate that goes here so we can bolt to it. So I'm actually out of steel, or re oh, I might have some thick steel over there, and so I'll have a look. But I've got to make a plate that goes on there, same on the other side. Um, and there's got to be a bolt plate go on here. So uh, I'm going to root through my metal and when I come back we'll cut some plates. I've just had a route around and I found a sheet of steel. Now this is, I think it's four, maybe, yeah, three, four mil, something like that. Now I think that's going to be thick enough for what I need. So I'm going to plasma cut some strips off uh, so that uh, we can make the brackets that go either side. Do you like the, yeah, those bits? that go either side. So this shouldn't take many minutes just to plasma cut these out. Uh, I've got a piece of wood some there that I'm going to use a piece of two inch wood because I'm going to make them 50 mil, 50 mil strips. Should be plenty for bolting. Uh, and that's it. So I think three, three and then a couple of squares. the way to do it.
It's been a few days since I've had the camera on. Uh, in the last scene you saw me plasma cutting out all those bits of metal. Uh, it's been red hot guys. Uh, it, it was too hot to film and I really didn't want to weld them up but I did. But I didn't film it. So I've actually welded up the brackets. They're not yours Ted. <sighs> Dogs eh? This, uh, I made them up. I made them up the other day and I'm not kidding it was so hot doing it. But that's what they ended up looking like. They are uh, super strong and they should work perfectly. Now they're both slightly different for a reason. Now, to look at them, they, they look the same. But what I had to do was, this one is the uh, driver's side, is 10 mil shorter than this one. A, I don't know if you can see, you might be able to see it on camera, that, that one's actually 10 mil shorter than the other one. And there's a reason for that, the snorkel. I've had to shunt the, I'm going to have to, when, when it all goes together, I'm going to have to shunt it all over 10 mil just to clear the snorkel, just so I can get the bars in. It was one of those, you know, do I have to move the snorkel around or do I, I just adjust the brackets? You're not going to see 10 mil in a roof rack. So, uh, but it works. So I'll show you where these go on the roof and just how they're going to look. Here you go. They're going to go there. So the back of the roof rack is going to be bolted here and this is going to get bolted. It's going to sit on top of this J channel and be bolted through onto the inside. Now the panel that's on the inside on both sides of this, I made it so they were removable as you saw when we did the interior. So I can just unclip and literally it's just that one panel. There's a structural bar that comes down here, that's what those rivets are. And then we just uh, put some spreaders in so there'll be a bolt there, a bolt into the bar and then a couple here. And uh, that'll be them in, they'll be super strong. And then I'm going to have a bar coming down off the bottom of the roof rack down here. And there'll be another one going off that way up to the front of the roof rack. So it's all coming together nicely. So what I'm going to do is split this video into two because this is going to take quite a while and I am going away this weekend so uh, there's no more uh, time to get any more work done on this. But in the next episode we're going to be drilling all the holes in this and all the way down here and marking it all up for the roof rack. So uh, if you've enjoyed this guys give me that thumbs up and I will see you on the next one.